Boy. Oh, boy. Get out of here. Hey guys, right here, welcome to my channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. Today we're going to be looking at this lithium iron phosphate battery as a power option when the power goes out. Specifically, I'm going to be running my fridge, my TV, my Wi-Fi router, and my laptop. See how long each of those run. Sorry for that crazy glare coming through the window. It makes the video look really old. So if you want to have some fun and look at this battery, come along, let's get started. So you can use the scroll bar to jump ahead if you want to see the different chapters of this video. 44 pounds, 19.8 pounds. So each of these batteries have 100 amp hours. However, this one, if you discharge it below 50%, it damages the cells. This one, you can discharge to zero without damaging the cells. So I can run this thing twice as long. It's like two of these really heavy batteries at half the weight. That is so crazy to me. This one only lasted me three years. So these lithium iron phosphate batteries are pretty new to the market. They're not to be confused with the lithium ion or the batteries that are in your phone that go dead or catch fire. These are very safe and they last a really long time. This one comes with a five year warranty, but it says this one has a 100% depth of discharge for 4,000 cycles. So that's like every day for 10 years. So I've got another battery that started out with five year warranty, but it lasted so long they extended it to 10 years. But it's an exciting time for batteries. See how long these batteries really last. It's looking, it's looking good. This 100 amp hour size is probably the most popular size, but it does come in a 50 amp hour version, 200 amp hour version, and I think it even comes with a 300 amp hour version. This can support 100 amps of current being drawn from the battery, just over 1200 watts. Because this battery is like two sealed lead acid batteries, you're probably fine getting by with just one of these for your RV. But if you want to run a micro, your microwave or air conditioning, uh, you might need a couple. My RV just came with one sealed lead acid battery before I converted over to a server rack battery. This battery has a capacity of 1,280 watt hours. So if you were to buy a portable power station at that size, it'll cost you about $1,000. This battery runs just over $300. Obviously you need to buy an inverter if you want to build your own power station. Because this is a 12 volt battery, you can connect it to a portable power station to extend the battery capacity of your power station. I'm going to make another video where I connect this battery to a power station and I'll put a link on the top to that video. All right, let's go ahead and start the test where we hook it up to my house appliances. So we'll first start with the fridge test. Now I did another fridge test with a server rack battery that was four times this size and I received a lot of comments saying the inverter was super inefficient and I should do it with a more efficient inverter. So I went ahead and bought one of the probably the most efficient inverter I could find and an expense super expensive inverter as well. You guessed it, it's a Victron. <laughs> this is the Victron Phoenix 12 volt uh, 500 VA. This specific model varies in cost depending on the size you get. This one was $150. I'm going to connect the terminals to the battery and then I will have 120 volts coming out of here to power my appliances. And then if I connect this battery monitor to the terminal I can see how much power is coming out of the battery and then I can test how efficient this inverter really is. You can say this thing is up to 90% efficient but we'll test it and see about that. Okay, first we're going to test the house fridge we have here. This is going to be running during the day. I have the cord running out here. And then we'll plug it into our inverter. So this is going to measure all the power coming out of the battery. And this is going to measure how much power is going out into the fridge. So we'll see how much power loss we get from having this connected. So we'll just let this run all day until the battery goes dead. This Victron is really nice because it has a even it even has an eco mode here. So the inverter turns off when there's not any draw of power. So when my condenser isn't running, in theory this thing shouldn't even be running at all. So it is 8:30 in the morning. Let me look at my app and I can see how much power it's drawing right now. Here's the Victron app. Okay, let me just clear the history so we get 
fresh data coming in, we can see how much discharged energy is uh, being used. So this should tally all the discharged energy coming out of the battery. Okay, right now it's drawing 50 amps. Fridge is working. Awesome. See how long this runs for. Hey guys, so it's 11.30 at night. Looks like I've discharged 89 amp hours from this battery so far, and it's a 100 amp hour battery. Discharged energy is 1.1 kilowatt hours. So it's almost done for. So if I wanna find out how much time it takes to consume 100 amp hours of energy, it takes 15 hours to consume 89 amp hours of the battery. I set that equal to the time it takes to consume 100 amp hours. So I just use regular algebra to solve for T, um, times both sides by 100 amp hours. So it should take me 16.8 hours to consume 100 amp hours. But let's look at how efficient this is. So it looks like this fridge itself has consumed 0.95 kilowatt hours of energy. And if I look at how much energy has come from the battery, it looks like the battery has discharged 1.1 1 .1 kilowatt hours of energy. So 0.95 over 1.1 kilowatt hours is 86. So 86% of the power coming out of the battery is actually making it into the fridge. So unfortunately in my tests I have found that the different manufacturers specifications never really line up in real world testing but it really varies a lot depending on what type of load you have connected to the inverter. I thought I heard somewhere that an inverter is most efficient when it's running at like 70% capacity. This inverter is pretty awesome though. So it looks like the fridge ran for 17 hours on that little battery. Not too bad. Okay, so it's 5.30. I just got done charging the battery. It's up to 100%. I charged it with these used solar panels. These are about $50 a piece on Santan Solar. There are many solar charge controllers you can use to charge the battery. I'm going to do another video where I run my fridge off solar and I'll test these different types of charge controllers to see how efficient they are. But let's go ahead and hook up the TV. Okay guys, here's the TV we're gonna run. It's a smart TV. I'll just plug it in right here. Okay, guys, I gotta turn it off just for a second to plug it in, okay? I'm gonna pause it. Why do you have to do this in the main room? There's a TV downstairs. <laughs> well, the TV downstairs doesn't get watched as much, that's why. Coming on, guys. Hold tight. There it goes. Looks good. Looks like the TV is pulling 75 watts. Okay, the TV's been running for four hours and 25 minutes. I, I have 75% of my battery life left. So just with those estimations, I should be able to run my TV for 17 hours. Okay, next we're gonna test the Wi-Fi router and the laptop. So here's my router. It's a Xfinity, pretty standard router. And for my battery monitor, I really like that Victron but I'm using it in my RV, and so I ended up buying a cheaper one. This is about half the price of the Victron, and I really like it so far. I've only used it a couple times. Let's hook up the Wi-Fi router and see how much power it uses. Okay, here is the new battery monitor. My battery is at currently at 100%. I'm gonna turn on the inverter right now. So it looks like when the inverter is idling, it's using 6.5 watts of energy. All right, let's plug in the router right now. We'll plug it in. See what the extra draw is on power. Power coming out of the battery is about 20 watts total with the inverter and the Wi-Fi router. Okay, let's go hook up the laptop. Okay, here's my laptop. It's a Dell. It's a pretty large laptop. The battery is already charged, so it's just going to go into maintenance mode. But here is the power supply. Looks like it can supply 240 watts when it's charging the battery and running. Let's go ahead and plug the laptop in. So 
So I'm just going to work on this laptop for a little bit and we'll see how much power we use. Okay, it's just been over two and a half hours. Let's see how much power we have used. Looks like we have consumed 10 amp hours. 10.7 amp hours and right around 0.1 kilowatt hours. So this app isn't quite as cool as the Victron app. Victron makes really good stuff. For instance, the graphs only start um, working when you open the app. Victron actually records it even if the app's closed. It'll show you all the data. So here's the data coming in right now. But it has basic information. It has the battery percentage, how much power you've consumed, how many amp hours you've consumed. So it shows you time remaining, which is really nice. So yeah, pretty good. So if it took me so if it took me two and a half hours to consume ten percent of my battery, I should be able to run this laptop and my router for twenty five hours. Okay, let's see what we can run. Let's plug everything in. Now, now this inverter, even though it says five hundred, that's not five hundred watts. That's five hundred VA. But if you look at the manual, this only equates to four hundred or three hundred fifty watts. So it's kind of confusing. I wish they would really put the watts that this thing can support. I just plugged in my, my Wi-Fi router and my laptop. On average, that is consuming 50 watts. Let's plug in the house fridge. Okay, plugging in the fridge right now. House fridge. Okay, time to plug in the TV. Hey Sam, what are you doing there? <laughs> Uh, you're gonna break mom's chair. Okay, the TV's on. They're about 50 watts of power draw. And I also just plugged in this, whoops, 19 watt light bulb. So let's look at what kind of power we have going on now. Okay, I know there's some people that are gonna say you're crazy for just plugging in tons of, uh, Tons of items in this surge protector here, but uh, there's only like just under two amps coming out into this, so it's not too bad. Now everything's plugged in TV, fridge, laptop, Wi Fi, uh, light, outdoor lights. Now at 6 30, let's let this run for a few hours. Okay, it's been running for one hour and 40 minutes. Looks like this is consumed. 0 0.40 kilowatt hours. So according to those numbers, it looks like it's operating at 80% with the data that I've got. Obviously that number can vary depending on how much watts you're pulling, but uh, looks like that's the number I'm getting from my data. I thought it'd be a little higher, but uh, is what it is. So using ratios, I should be able to run everything I have plugged in right now for four hours. So you can see here that if you want to run a lot of things, you probably need a bigger system, need a bigger battery, bigger inverter. So I'll put another link here of me running three fridges and I my front my house furnace on a larger battery and a larger system. So click on that if you're interested. And I'm also making a video on how many solar panels you need to run your house fridge when you have cloud cover. So I'm going to put that pretty soon, put that right here as well when I get that finished. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps somebody. Talk to you later. Bye.